What's up everyone? We're back with another team tour recap video today. Our opponent this time is the team known as I Cry Every Time, which is spelled a little bit weirdly, but it consists of players such as Geo, Inferno Al, King Nelson, Brad Gaming, who is going to be my opponent for today, Rex, I am Dirk, and Booga. And it's actually kind of interesting. We are on friendly terms with this team. Like Booga is in our Discord server all the time. Brad Gaming is a friend of the channel. You've probably seen him in the comments. And also Rev GT has been matched up against him in the past. So he is a formidable opponent. And we also have uh, people like Inferno Ao who are just very cool guys in general and they stream on Twitch from time to time. But uh, yeah, I think Brett has improved quite a bit throughout this season. He has been taking down some pretty strong players, so I was kind of worried about matching up against him. And this game, which I'm going to show off right here, uh, we can even hop right into it. Uh, it's going to be a Puppy Pack versus Puppy Pack. So Puppy Pack is his main pack. I play all of the packs in like a random order, so uh, I have to learn all of the packs and uh, I don't think Puppy Pack is my strongest, so I think I'm kind of unfavored right here, but I think I get a pretty decent start. Double Chinchilla plus a Beetle and we even get some more Beetles to boot. So we have a pretty good economy start, we are going to have at least one level up, hopefully two. And we actually get rewarded for our greediness. Looking at Brett's positioning right here, we get a draw, which is extremely good. He's going for like a um, big mod, which uh, usually does work pretty well in the puppy pack. And uh, he's also buffing it up with a bluebird, so he's looking kind of scary, but I think we have a little bit of promise as well. The reason I'm taking Beetle, it's not a great unit by itself, but if we can take a look right here, it goes super well with a Ladybug if we potentially get one because Ladybug is going to transform into a 3-3 at the very least but with our current team it would even transform into a 7-3 I think. Yeah I think it's a 7-3 which is actually kind of crazy. It can counter his mod potentially in the future but I don't think we're going to get one, instead we get double level ups for the next turn, which is actually very good news as well. We don't have to spend even a single bit of gold getting K tier 1 unit for the level up, which is I think a luxury that Bread Gaming did not have. Here we get to draw once again, but it doesn't really matter. Because we are playing puppy versus puppy, we are not really trying to throw because we don't really <laughs> care about snail. And here we level up into some pretty decent units. One of them is going to be this hatching chick right here. It's an auto take basically any time for me. Like if we take a look at the tier 3 units we have hatching chick. We have tropical fish which are my two favorites. We also have stuff like puppy which I think is a close third. Because it gives you some pretty good toys. Like it can give you this oven mitts right here for the free lasagna in two turns. And then you also have potentially an owl if you are going for a four squad which the pack does support with stuff like the buffalo, the llama and the dragon right here, even the goat as well to support the buy cells. But uh, here we level up into hatching check and we also level up into a mole which you can see I'm very excited about taking. I think it's a better option than the flying squirrel right here. And I am taking it because not only do we have one beetle on the team already which enables half of the mo combo but we also have yet another beetle on the shop. So here we go now the full be um, not beaver full mo combo is activated. Positioning is going to be a little bit of a doozy but we are going to manage somehow. I think I'm even going to sell the chinchilla in order to buy this toucan and buy the meat bone onto it. So here we go, from turn 3 already we have a very strong team, both of these units are going to have meat bones, the toucan is going to get some extra stats from the hatching chick, so we are not really afraid of a big gecko, we are not really afraid of a big mod, at least not yet. 
and then the mold with the 6 6 that is going to spawn from the two perks behind it i think is going to clean up that's the dream anyway let's take a look at how the fight is going to commence and uh, here we go actually our opponent Brad gets quite lucky right here he gets a uh, garlic press for the free garlic and hp onto the gecko and he also finds an owl for the extra little bit of stats he gets every single turn but this turn at least it's not going to save him as we win here quite easily and uh, on this turn it's a little bit tricky to play the main thing we are looking for is like um, if we open up the pack right here I think we're looking for two cans, we're looking for more um, tabby cats and uh, of course you can manage to get the level on the beetle, that's going to be very good news for us. I think also a lemur for the toy is not a horrible idea. But uh, here we go, we find one beetle in shop, the lemur that I said we were looking for but I don't think we're going to take because we already have a meatball on the team, we shall see though. Uh, the very good thing about the beetle is actually that it gets a meat bone on level 2 so that means it can trade into some pretty big units so that is the hope right here as I am pausing the game way too much I think for the early turns but uh, I think this time the mo is not going to be as useful as the meat bone and uh, I think having multiple meat bones against his team is going to be super good so we're not going to be utilizing the ability this turn so hopefully we manage to win once again. He's trying to reposition a little bit, trying to be a little bit cheeky, but unfortunately for him it does not work out and we win once again. Uh, I was commended actually on my early game, which uh, I am very happy about, both by my teammates and by Revolving Hulk, who I deem to be the strongest puppy pack player ever, so I am kind of happy with myself. Here we get a level 2 or a level 3 rather on the beetle. This turn I misplayed a little bit. I should not have gotten a toy or at least I should not have gotten a melon because we don't have a good target for it. Um, here I am going to freeze the uh, pill. We're going to keep the pangolin for a turn and then pill it onto the two can on the next turn. There are some teams that I could have improved upon, but I will pause the game next turn and uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But for now, we're going to enjoy yet another win, which is super good. Uh, Brad is down to 3 HP, but once again, he is scaling and we are not. He has L plus Shrimp and two very beefy units. So if he ever decides to position th this Gecko right up at the front, I think we're going to have a horrible time. But um, I was speaking with Revolving Coke about this game and he suggested that I either put the hatching chick up in the first position to receive the melon or just the toucan so it can gain the melon and we can potentially pill it onto yet another unit for a pseudo turtle effect. Here though I think I just peel the pangolin onto the toucan because I'm intending to keep it. Double hatching check as well is going to be super nice. It does sting a little bit that we have to combine one of them into another copy. You usually want to play them separately for the extra bit of temporary stats that you get. But at the very end of the day, I believe, as the game is going to bug out, but uh, at least you can see I am putting the Garyo up at the front to receive the melon, which... Um, is incorrect as we already established but uh, I was kind of happy with this at the time. In the late game it's going to come back to bite us because we're going to be selling this Gary eventually which is going to be a little bit sad but uh, hopefully this time we win. Unfortunately we do not. Our opponent finally going for some temporary stats with a hatching check not even abusing the um, free apple out of the owl which um, I guess is the correct play because I am getting a little bit too far ahead on hearts so he is starting to fight back and it's starting to look quite scary now at least we do get the melon we're going to get a level and it's going to result in a poodle very curiously right here we have the axolotl plus two can combo we also have a beetle as well, so that works with the axolotl too. But uh, just the poodle is going to be buffing every single one of these units, so I think uh, just 
Poodle is the better generic scaler to get. It's going to help out much more in the end game as well. We freeze a pie. I should have bought it immediately, but I was looking for extra copies of a toucan to potentially help me win this round. But since we don't find any, we just put it on the hatching check instead and hope for a win. It's very nice now that the hatching check is giving us some permanent stats onto the toucan as well as the poodle. So we have a lot of uh, scaling to do. Here we get a very fortunate doll. Uh, as you can see, I think now our scaling is superior as he has sold his shrimp, he has sold his owl. The best scaling he has is some temporary stats with the hatching chicks and the pie onto the mod, which um, is very good for us, honestly. If it continues like this, we are going to be having a great time. Here I pick up a lobster because we are hoping to transition into late game units next turn. That's why we are preserving the level up on the two can as well. And uh, very curiously, I actually decide to replace the meat bone on the two can with a salt, which is yet another play I am proud of. Salt, if you don't know what it does, it says right there on the screen, attack lower tier pets for double damage. And since his strongest pets are both tier 1, even the toucan is getting to deal double damage because it is tier 2. Same goes for the hatching chick that is behind it that will inherit the salt after the fainting of the toucan. So that is great news for us, hopefully that translates into a win on this round. We also get double cans right here because we are, as I said, trying to scale up the future tier shop pets and we are going to transition into them eventually. But here we go, we are going to hop into a fight, see how well we do. Poodle is not at full efficiency anymore as we have double tier 4 units onto the team, but that doesn't really matter. Salt actually I think does make a little bit of a difference right here, but it does not matter in the end as we lose by 4 HP, the exact amount that the pie gave to the mod. So kind of unfortunate, but yet again he did purchase it, so he did win that round based off of his decision making. And here I am starting to make a little bit of a misplay, I am buying the canned foods right now, when I really should be taking my level up first. If we take a look at the level ups, one of them is the Sora pot, which uh, if we purchase and then we buy the cans, uh, the cans are going to be discounted by one gold because the Sora pot is going to refund it. And uh, just look at what happens, we buy the cans, we buy the cans, we level the two can. And then we get the sauropod, so we are quite severely punished for our mistake. And I was also told that I could have gone with the mongoose right here, try to take the peanut, try to cheese some victories. That's the good thing about the toucan, because in the late game you can start getting some peanut toys and then the toucan is going to just um, give them to the rest of the team via its ability. And also the peanut toy was going to work super well with the Mosasaurus that gives extra stats whenever a toy breaks. So yeah, a little bit of a misplay that I first of all don't buy the cans when I shoot and then I just uh, freeze the sauropod instead of the mongoose. But at least we do get a lasagna for our treble so that is going to be a good thing. We get some stats on this turn as well. I'm trying to cheese out a victory but I don't think it's happening. Yeah, we're 2 HP off and uh, once again we lose by 4 HP which is the exact same amount that the pie is giving. So very good pie purchase from Brett. Here we're going to transition away from the Gary, which uh, sadly we gave uh, the melon to so we are saying goodbye to the melon as well. And we're going to be picking up this sour pot right here. And now we're going to start buying Wazanias because they are only 2 gold cost and that is very good for us. We're going to buff up the Toucan because we want it up to 21 attacks so we can manage to kill some units with Peanut even through a Melon Armor. Which is going to be very important for us. Now we are at 19 currently but I think that's going to be good enough. Here I think we should be winning, yep, very clutch sword onto the hatching chick right there, taking care of their mod, which is extremely good. Here I am transitioning into some scaling with the T-Rex, I believe. 
Yep. Maybe the weakness from the puppy was a consideration, but then again, I don't think it really does anything. So I'm just trying to outscale my opponent, even though he has a level 1 dragon plus a level 1 poodle, but I think we have some pretty decent scaling regardless. We're up to 21 attacks, so the peanut toy will start taking out units through melon. And I am trying to uh, position in such a way that this stake takes out the um, stonefish right here. We have some pretty good buff targets in the panther at the back. Our opponent repositioned and uh, sadly I don't think for them that's going to be good enough for a victory. So now they are down to a single heart. We only need to cheese out one more victory and you can see I have frozen some units in preparation of that. We're going to take a level on the sauropod because I am hoping to level up into a mongoose. It does not happen. We level up into puma plus octopus. Octopus could have been decent to potentially snipe something like the poodle at the back and uh, they won't have any survivors left to claim a draw. But uh, I think I just throw past all of that and land on an elephant seal. So we're now going to start scaling up our stats a little bit. Very nice combo with the Sauropod by the way, because Sauropod is going to refund you 2 gold, therefore you are getting cheap foods and therefore cheap scaling. So let's see if we manage to win, we will be very lucky if we do, because we didn't even bother to reposition. And uh, we can see right here, Brett has picked up an air palm tree, which is basically a coconut onto his front line. And that is super unfortunate, because it means that the Stonefish gets to live on 1 HP and basically wipes out our entire team. So it's kind of starting to look scary now. His dragon is also on level 2, which means he's getting very rapid scaling. So I was getting kind of scared right here because my scaling was insufficient in my own opinion. I was told that it was actually not correct. We did have some proper scaling to combat his scaling. Whatever the case though, I am once again going back to the idea of trying to scam a victory game. So we are freezing this ferret right here, we are going to buy the steak. And we are going to take the tennis ball. Tennis ball we take because if he gets coconut then the tennis ball can potentially pop it. And same goes for like a potential melon on some of these other units that he has. And we are also going to take this Mantis Shrimp. Mantis Shrimp we take just to guarantee that we pop the coconut toy right here onto the Stonefish. So uh, yeah, hopefully this is good enough to win now. It's starting to get kind of close. I'm starting to get kind of worried. And uh, we'll see if this is good enough. I'll actually play this in slow motion because I'm not really sure what happens. So first the tennis ball triggers and then he gets the coconut, which is the exact opposite order of what we wanted, sadly. We wanted to pop the coconut with our tennis ball, but unfortunately that's only a 50-50 chance. No matter though, the mantis shrimp did help us out. And uh, this battle is going to end up very sadly for us, as you can see right here. The uh, beetle has 4 attack but then the bee at the back has 1 extra attack in order to claim the draw for him. Super unfortunate as I have forsaken my scaling and still uh, he has his. So it's starting to look very scary for us. The game is giving us double elephant seal in order to make us pivot back into the scaling but I don't think that's very likely for us to do. Instead, I am leveling up the panther, hoping for a mongoose this time, and thankfully this time we do in fact get it. The coconut toy has expired for bread, so I think it's only fitting for us to get a peanut this time. So we get one. The, the toucan is going to give it back to the friends behind, so that is two extra peanuts for us. We can even replace the melon with a pancake because as I just said it's going to get replaced by a peanut regardless so we can just abuse the free stats and hopefully now this is good enough to win right? We hop into battle let's see what we get matched up against and as it turns out Brett has purchased a microbe which makes all pets weak whenever it faints. 
So that means it's going to nullify the pin that we receive right here. It's going to replace it with a weakness and therefore we just lose. So now it's super scary. It's down to one heart versus one heart and this is going to be the final turn. Super close game. And, but I think the shop is going to give us just the amount of luck that we need. And we are going to roll into this snapping turtle right here. Which is going to give us cure whenever it faints. And I actually think I misplay a little bit on this turn as well. Because uh, we want to place the uh, snapping turtle behind the toucan. So the toucan can receive the skewer. And then it can give the skewer back to these pets right here. So basically all of our team is getting a skewer. But at the very end I just make a little bit of a positioning mistake. And just give it to the panther which is then not going to give it back to the pets at the back. So a little bit of a misplay, but I think it's going to be good enough for us to win still. So let's take a look. My crop is still on his team. Now it even has some pancakes on, which is kind of a funny sight. But uh, let's take a look at the final battle. We get the skewer right here and we manage to win with the power of the sauropod at the back. So super close game and on the whole the set was super close itself. I was very happy with this win. And I believe the final score was 4 victories to me and 2 victories to Brett. So I managed to win the set. But enough about our set, let's just talk about the week and the team as a whole. I have the full score right here, everyone has played their games. Violet Citizen managed to be Geo 3 to 2, which is super good. Al lost, or uh, rather, Al won to Damon, who lost 4 to 2, I believe it was. Damon won two games on Star Pack, funnily enough, which uh, is considered to be relatively weak compared to the other packs. Then we have King Nelson beating out Coty 3 to 2, which is a little bit sad for our team once again. But then again, we do have my victory against Brett Gaming. And then we have Ambo beating Rex 3 to 1, which I believe is a huge upset. Rex was believed to win that game and uh, sadly for them, they did not. And then at the very end, uh, we have two more games being uh, I am Dirk against Jiggy, where I am Dirk won 3 to 1. And then we have Drazy against Booger, who um, Drazy thankfully managed to beat 3-2-1 as well. So close week on the whole, we managed to win 4-3. Our opponents are being very formidable, but I think we are strong enough for us uh, to defeat them, which is great news. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, I really hope that you like, sub, do all the generic stuff, and I will talk to you next time. Take care.